Hello everybody, in this video I want to talk to you guys about 10 ultra budget decks that you can use in Skolomance Hearthstone for standard play. So the rules for these decks is that they use no epics or legendaries that you would be required to craft. I believe in a couple of the decks there are some of the freebie legendaries like Archmage Vargoth, uh, which if you've been playing Hearthstone for a while you should get for free, but generally these decks should be incredibly cheap to craft relying on either free cards or commons and rares. So let's go ahead and start with this Demon Hunter Budget Weenie Soul stack. Uh, I could probably come up with a better name for it, but the idea of this deck is that it uses the new Soul Fragment functionality. And you'll notice if you look through it that all of the Demon Hunter Soul Fragment cards are in here with the exception of the new Legendary. So the new Legendary is so Sociologist Militia. Um, I, ha I was trying this deck pretty much the same list, just with this card included, and I didn't even notice that much of a difference. Like, Sociologist, Militia, it was never really a game-winning card for me, so I'm not even sure if I would include it in a final deck list anyway. So, you can see up here we have cards like Spirit Jailer, and then uh, Soul Shear, and uh, Shatter, <laughs> Shard Shatter Mystic. So these are all kind of synergetic with each other. The idea is that you add soul shards to your deck where when they're drawn, they restore to health. So it tilts you a little bit towards control, but you can spend those soul shards with cards like this in order to get an effect on the board. So generally you do want to sacrifice the soul shards to get the bonus effect because they're usually a lot stronger than just gaining two health. But when you do draw the two health, it can be nice because Demon Hunter doesn't really have any heal otherwise. So uh, one of the key cards for that would be Soul Shard Lapidary. It's a 5 mana 5-5, five, five, give your hero five, plus 5 attack this turn. I was trying to play around with using this with, uh, what's that card called? Uh, Blade Dance. Because since it's attack on your hero, you could use Blade Dance to deal 5 damage to all of the enemy minions, or more if you have a weapon equipped. But it just seemed a little bit too hard to set up. So let's talk about the other cards. Feast of Souls. Uh, generally, Demon Hunters don't run this, but I'm really trying to tilt this deck towards summoning a lot of small guys with Rush. So cards like Command the Illidari are prime examples of that. And uh, one of the things that makes cards like this a little better is uh, things like Fell Guardians. So Fell Guardians summon three 1-2 demons with taunt, costs one less whenever a friendly minion dies. So often you can just play Command the Illidari, and then all of you guys die trading into minions, and then you get to summon three taunts on the back of that. And these taunts are really annoying for decks like the new aggro rogues, which there are quite a lot of. So don't underestimate free 1-2 taunts. It's actually pretty good. Now, um, I think one of the more controversial cards might be Cycle of Hatred. I had a lot of good experiences basically playing this deck, but the other version uh, that has the... 7 cost sociologist militia, the non-budget version. But every time I played Cycle of Hatred, it felt really good. It is actually a very strong card. If you are going up against the decks which are like Commencement Warrior, um, the Ramp Druids, which there are quite a few of to be fair, then it is a lot less good because those really big minions will shut you down. So this is more of like an anti-aggro tool. Although Demon Hunter is generally pretty aggressive, I would phrase this more as like a mid-range kind of control -y deck. A lot of the cards, um, like Bone Wraith, are more of defensive plays. Command the Illidari, I would classify more as a defensive play. And then this Wraith scale on Naga. Uh, it can be offensive, but it's really only good if your opponent has guys on the board, because you got, your minions have to die in order to get the benefit off of it. In one game, I was able to get like 30 damage by having two Wraith scale Nagas hit the board and actually survive a turn. Don't expect that to happen, by the way. But then if you throw Command the Illidari on top of that, well, there's five board spaces, so five guys dying that turn means you get to deal 30 damage randomly. That was a ridiculous play. So I do think this card deserves a slot, even though it only has one health. Um, other cards like Shatter Sword, Mystic are just really good against aggressive decks. So if you run into stuff like the new Totem Shaman, um, that will be a good card. So I think this deck is pretty competent. Let me show you the version I was running around silver or gold rank. Uh, mostly gold. Right now I'm actually diamond 10. Humble brag. <laughs> but um, you can see it's basically the same list. Uh, and I had a 69% win rate with this. Specifically, let me see how many games that was. Uh, 
13 games. Okay, so not the biggest sample size, but not a bad deck. Um, you can see the main difference here. I put two Chaos Novas, uh, Sociologist Militia, and then I think the card I cut for the budget version was... Or the card I added in, rather, was Umberwing. Kind of debatable whether this is really good or not. It is nice for the Weenie Synergy. I mean, you can summon those and then Cycle of Hatred, buff them up to 3-3s, three basically. Uh, they qualify for Fell Guardians. So I think this is a really decent uh, free budget option that you can use. Anyway, that's the idea. It's a pretty solid deck. And really, the Sociologist Militia, I, I don't really think you're even missing out on that much. Sometimes you have this card in hand and you don't even have enough soul fragments in the deck to really make it worth it. So just sacrificing them to use with these benefit cards is probably good enough, honestly. Okay, let's move on to the next deck so that this doesn't become a two-hour video. So Budget Taunt. Um, this is the one that I think is really experimental here. I haven't actually tried it out, but... And maybe, maybe I went a little bit too extreme. You'll notice that there are no weapons in the deck. So if you do want to swap in a weapon, the one you're going to want is probably going to be two copies of Reaper Scythe. That is actually a pretty good card. I thought when I was building these decks yesterday that there would be a lot more weapon hate. But, I mean, I've seen a few oozes, but not that much. Maybe 10-20% of the decks will have weapon destruction. So I was trying to avoid that, but the basic idea here is that you just have a bunch of taunt minions in the deck. There are some strong ones uh, from the new set. Smug Senior is a 6 mana 5 7 taunt that death rattles and adds a 6 mana 5 7 taunt to your hand. So that is a lot of value. And the idea of having all of these pretty durable taunt minions is that, well yes, they're going to block some aggro damage. But also, if you go up against more controlling decks like a Priest, hopefully you'll just be able to beat them down before they basically get infinite value. Uh, if you have big taunts after big taunts, and the idea here is you use Into the Fray to uh, buff those minions up if you can. If you had uh, that legendary Ar Amaja Dillo, then that would make this deck even better. Uh, you can see at the end of your turn, give all taunt minions plus two plus two. That definitely fits this kind of archetype, but obviously not a budget card. I don't have it. Um, Let's see, in addition, information, add two random taunt minions to your hand. So this was a new card in the set. A lot of people don't like it, um, but it's it's not too bad. If you are playing taunt theme and you get those into the frays going, it can really be a lot of stats. So aside from that, cards like Bone Shoe Brawler, uh, Frightened Flunky, just decent early game plays. Shield of Honor, um, really good trading mechanism. Obviously, this isn't really a damage deck. Uh, as in self damage to get buffs, but I think it's good enough anyway that you'll eventually get to get a really solid trade with that. And this is a tempo deck, so it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Rocket Augment Merchant. Um, deal one damage to a minion and give it rush. You can either use this to kill a small guy off your opponent. Probably good against stealth rogues because a lot of the guys have one health. Uh, but you can also use it in combination with Shield of Honor to basically give a guy rush and divine shield and plus three attack and pretty much kill just about anything on the turn you'd play that two mana plus another guy combo. Wretched Tutor I think is actually one of the stronger commons in this set. Deal two damage to all other minions as a spell burst. You may notice all of the spells in this deck are pretty cheap so I think that is warranted and yeah just pretty decent pretty solid. If you get up to Tomb Warden and you buffer it with Into the Fray that's going to be pretty decent kind of hard to deal with so i think this is decent um oh and uh, restless mummy as the rush card of choice so athletic studies discover a rush minion your next one costs one less so this is good because it's, it's six damage removal across two minions or twice under one minion but it's even better than that because you can use it with shield of honor give a damaged minion plus three attack and divine shield so when a minion dies with it born it's going to come back as a one health minion which means that it is already damaged so on the second hit you can give it plus three attack and divine shield making it a six one divine shield rush really good for trading okay uh that's about it for this deck pretty straightforward and um you might notice a lot of these are kind of mid-rangey unless you have probably most of the control legendaries i probably wouldn't try to go with something too heavy too late game because aggro decks would just walk over you unless you have all of the dust to make the perfect control deck so a lot of these are more mid-range so let's see budget spell damage um so this is 
kind of roughly based off of uh, Dexter's list before the expansion. So he was playing Burst, Spell Damage, Shaman. Um, obviously, kind of key cards are missing here, like Lurker Below and Lady Vash, which are really nice in this kind of thing. Lurker Below as removal and then Lady Vash as uh, Spell Damage, but also if you get that Lady Vash Prime, Drawing three spells with zero mana cost, that is really, really good. So if you have those, you would definitely include it. Uh, but the idea is that you just put out a bunch of spell damage onto the board. Um, some of these spell damage cards, like Mana Reservoir, you would think they're not that good. But the thing is, it is six health. It's a threat because as a spell damage deck, you just don't want to leave spell damage on your opponent's board. If they don't have minions to trade into this, then it is actually going to be trouble for them. Um you know, buffing up your spells, and maybe even more importantly than that, activating cards like Arcane Watcher. Three mana, five, six, can't attack unless you have spell damage. Um, one of the key cards, key new common, Sorcerer's Substitute. If you have spell damage, summon a copy of this. So this is a six mana, 12, 12. So as long as you have spell damage somewhere on the board, very easy to do, by the way, with Rune Dagger, then your turn six can be super powerful. And uh, hopefully with a strong turn six and some burn spells to follow it up, uh, you can finish off your opponent before they go crazy with control stuff or ramp druid stuff, that kind of thing. Now, um, one of the new cards that may fit into this deck, I didn't bother to craft it. I'm not sure if it is great or not. Um, Molten Blast, deal two damage, summon that many elementals. So obviously, this gets double the benefit from spell damage. Uh, if you add plus one spell damage, it summons three elementals and deals three damage, and that might be pretty good. Um, I, I'm just not sure. This is maybe more of an aggressive list than something that would play Molten Blast. But if you have it and you feel like it, you can do that. Um, instead, the main burst spells are Serpent Train Portal, Lava Burst, and Lightning Bolt. And that's about it. Um, yeah, so Voracious Reader and Spellbinder, Spellbook Binder, extra fuel. So hopefully after you empty your hand, if... You have this card, you can draw a few extra cards, and hopefully that'll be enough to finish off your opponent. But yeah, just a pretty aggressive list. Um, yeah, seems pretty decent as is. And then the Wretched Tutor is here once again as some uh, kind of emergency board clear. Uh, you're not really going to be too minion heavy, so you're not trying to gain the board. You're just trying to have like one spell damage minion stick, and then hitting your opponent for a bunch of damage with your spells. So I think it's okay to clear the board with the spell burst. Okay, next up, uh, Budget, Skullamance, Galakrond. Okay, so all the rogues right now are playing... Uh, let me find the card. Secret Passage. <laughs> so two copies of Secret Passage. If you did have Secret Passage, I would probably run this in pretty much any rogue. It's really strong. It is really strong. It's what makes all the aggressive rogues, rogue decks work right now. Um, but if you're playing pure budget, then I would probably just go with something like a simple Galakrond list. So, Galakrond, I'm sure you already know. Hero power, add a lackey to your hand, and whenever you invoke Galakrond with cards like Shield of Galakrond, you get that same effect, you add lackeys to your hand. And the lackeys are one mana cards which um, get you really strong effects. So, in terms of being able to control the board and kind of tempo your game out in the late game, lackeys are pretty good. Um, just like the effects are really strong. So, Galakrond Rogue has been pretty consistently one of the stronger Galakrond decks. So in addition to that, um, basically you have a lot of mid-rangey cards playing for value here. Dragon's Horde, I think, is a decent one cost. Uh, discover a legendary minion from another class. Uh, legendary minions that are class-specific are going to be pretty strong. So I think that is a decent turn one play. Feral Cat, one mana, one two, adding a reborn minion to your hand. A lot of reborn cards are defensive, so it really makes sense. And just getting a free card for one mana is that was so nice. Plague of Madness, uh, I threw this in here as like a weapon hate, so if you were going up against, uh, I don't know, something like the aggressive rogues, those would give you a lot of problem, but if you can destroy their four durability weapons with this, that's going to be pretty good. Um, aside from that, a decent way to trade with enemy minions, maybe not the best card, but it is a one mana spell, so once again, cards like Wretched Tutor or Spell Burst, you have to play a spell in order to trigger the Spell Burst effect. So having those one-cost spells is pretty good when you have some spell burst. Also throw in Onyx Mage Scribe into this deck, another uh, spell burst effect. I've been playing this a lot in my Control Priest deck, which is the one I hit Legend. Uh, sorry, one I hit uh, Diamond with, um, and that is a six mana four nine spell burst. Add two random spells from your class to your hand. 
Note that it has really strong stats, and getting two spells on the back of it is pretty decent. All of the spells in this deck are pretty cheap, so it's pretty easy to get that value if you are going into the later game. Okay, what else to note here? Uh, Wand Thief, it's a combo. You discover a mage spell. Uh, mage spells are pretty good. A lot of them are kind of controlly. If you can get a Frostbolt off of that, that's pretty decent. Um, just kind of a decent filler card. Voracious Reader. Uh, maybe this card doesn't even belong in this deck, actually, now that I think about it. Why is that there? Let's see if we can find a better replacement for that in a minute. Uh, Seal Fate, just all of these standard Invoke cards. You want all of the Invoke stuff so you can get Galakrond up to uh, two or four Invokes so that it becomes more powerful when you play it. Uh, SI7 Agent, decent removal. Shifty Sophomore. So there's a four mana, four, four. Spell burst, add a combo card to your hand. So basically a four mana, four, four that gets you a free card is pretty good. It's very hard to remove this before you get the spell burst off because it has stealth. So adding a combo card to your hand, uh, most of those are going to be, well, all of them are going to be rogue. But I mean, there is the one rogue mage combo card here. Um, and I guess there's that new coerce card, which is more removal. Um, combo cards are decent so you could kind of think of it as a four mana four four get a new card on the following turn as long as you're playing a cheap spell stack and i think that is pretty solid so that's about it there but i do think the mana curve is too slow here for voracious reader so i'm going to take that card out of the deck as strong as voracious reader is you really do have to be playing a low mana curve so let's toss that and see if there's something better that isn't secret passage uh because that's an epic um Let's see, Clever Disguise, getting two random spells is not too bad, but I think we can do better. Plagiarize might be good. Um, at the end of your opponent's turn, add copies of the cards they played to your hand. The thing is, um, there is a really good Secret Rogue card right here, Shadow Jeweler Hanar. I'm not sure I would go the Secrets direction without this after you play a Secret, discover a Secret from a different class. Um, but if you had that, then adding some Secrets would be a good defensive option. So let's see, anything better than Plagiarize? Let's see. You could run Plagiarize and Dirty Chick Tricks for a uh, card draw. That might be interesting, actually. But let's keep going. Um, Waxmancy, discover Battle Cry minion, reduce its cost by two. Um, I'm not sure about that. Chorus, destroy a damaged minion, combo destroy any minion. So three mana removal. Uh, yeah. You know what, that might make sense. Um, that seems like a decent removal. Three mana execute, basically, if you can combo it. There's a lot of cheap spells here, so that seems pretty solid. And... Let me just keep looking through here a little bit. Everything else is probably too high. So, I don't know. I think plagiarize might be fun as a one-off. Let's throw it in there. So if you plagiarize in the later turns, you'll get like two or three copies of your opponent's card. I think I think that's pretty decent. Um, if you don't like that, you could run Dirty Tricks as well. That's uh, pretty much guaranteed to be a two mana draw two. Mm. Yeah, you know what? Let's swap that out to the Dirty Tricks. I don't actually know how good the plagiarize would be in, uh, in practice. It sounds interesting in theory, but I know Dirty Tricks could be pretty good as a one-off. So let's go with that list. And that'll help you draw towards Galakrond anyway, so I think the draw makes more sense than copying cards. So let's sit done there on that. I think that's pretty solid. And we'll go to the Budget Tempo Buffs Paladin list. So the idea here is pretty straightforward. Uh, you play minions, you try to buff them up. A really strong buff, Blessing of Authority, give a minion plus eight plus eight. It can't attack heroes this turn. Um, you have this for trading. You don't really need to attack heroes this, uh, attack heroes this turn. Because on the following turn, you're still going to have that minion, probably. Um, usually going to be a two for one. Like, you outright annihilate your opponent's minion, and then you force a removal from them for five mana. Pretty decent. Um, Archmage Vargoth here. So if you're playing a bunch of buffs, as long as you can keep your opponent's board clear, then having buffs like this is going to be nice. So... Let's say on turn 9, if it did happen to get that late, you could Blessing of Authority your Vargoth, and it would cast it again, and then you'd have something like a 1725 Vargoth. It would be better if you could spread the buffs out, but you kind of get the idea here. Um, cards like First Day of School, um, pretty decent, getting two random one-cost minions. Good for triggering Spell Burst, such as on Goody Two Shields, a pretty solid tempo minion. Um, 
on this list I did throw in Voracious Reader because the mana curve is pretty low. You could push it a little lower. I threw in Ogremancer. Um, I think this card is interesting and maybe not the best card, but it's a new common. Whenever your opponent casts a spell, summon over a 2-2 uh, taunt skeleton. So if you're playing for tempo, which this deck definitely is, then you can throw that in there. Um, if your opponent has to remove it, at least you get a 2-2 two, two taunt on the back of it. So this could be pretty annoying to deal with. I think it is decent. And the stats are fine too, 3-7. Um, probably going to be pretty good with buffs like Hand of Adele, buffing it up to like a 5-9 that has to be removed. So yeah, it seems like a decent include. Aside from that, um, let's see, a Bone Chewer Brawler. Pretty decent with buffs if it can take some damage and then get to attack. You're going to get extra attack. Air Raid, uh, just a decent cheap spell, kind of like a 2-mana two 2-2, two two, draw a 2-mana uh, two 2-2, two two. not too bad. Um, Shield of Honor, uh, really strong, especially with cards like Bone Chewer Brawler, anything that's going to take some damage, throwing a Divine Shield on it, it's just going to be a really strong tempo play, I think this is really good. Uh, Pin Flinger, um, I think that's kind of in here for fun, but it, it does seem pretty decent. Some decks out there, there's a rogue deck that plays this, and I've seen a quest shaman try it once too, uh, since quest shaman doubles your battle cries, so dealing two damage every time you play pin flinger. It's, a, it's an arcane archer that's repeatable, so I think that's pretty decent. It does kind of fit with voracious reader pretty decently, so I think it's worth a shot. As far as secrets go, I put in Desperate Measures and Never Surrender. Since you're playing a lot of weak minions, you don't want to get wrecked by a board clear. So if your opponent happens to play something that does board clear as a damage, you guys might survive with Never Surrender. So that's why I think that's probably the best secret for this deck. Um, also, uh, Desperate Measures, pretty good with Archmaid Vargoth as a turn 5 play. So kind of fits in there. And then as a weapon, you have Mysterious Blade. As long as you have a secret, it's a 2 mana fiery war axe. So pretty decent, good for tempo. And, yeah, I mean, we throw an Intrepid Initiate. With all these cheap spells, it's kind of a 1-mana 3-2 animated broomstick. 1-mana 1-1, one, one, give all your minions rush, including this minion. So if you want to make a bunch of trades, or if you just threw Blessing of Authority on a new minion, then maybe you can follow that up with animated broomstick, and uh, you get a nice trade in. So I'm not 100% sure about, like, a final list here, um, but that seems pretty decent. Cards like Brazen Zealot might it but i mean generally that card's been pretty easily pretty easy to remove if you have the libram package uh, of course you can play libram paladin with all of this stuff and that might be a bit stronger but i think that's only really worth it if you have libram of hope and uh even then i'm not certain about that because with with this kind of list you want to close out the game pretty fast and libram's are only good if you draw all of the pieces so it might not actually fit it might make sense to just go more aggressive um, you could consider Imprisoned Sungill, Brazen Zealot. I mean, those cards are pretty decent. They might be better than Ping, Pinflinger or Intrepid Initiate, but uh, if you want to play with the Skullamance cards, I think this is decent as well. Ah, uh, Intrepid Initiate, would I... It does have two health. I'm not... I'm not 100% certain if that is worse than Brazen Zealot. It depends on how aggro you want to go. Um... You could drop something like Ogremancer for Brazen Zealot. Let's see here. Uh, Archmaid Vargoth. Is that too greedy? Okay. Brazen Zealot. Brazen Zealot. Mm, anyway, there's, there's some options you can play around with. So if you want to go super aggressive on the minions, I mean, I haven't exactly seen that work out super strong. I think having kind of a mix, oh, whoops, a mix here with buffs is going to be... Decent. If you just go pure minions, I think that would be losing overall. So it requires a little bit of experimentation, but you get the idea of the deck. I would definitely try to go a buff route if you're trying to play a budget paladin. Okay, so next up, uh, Swarm Hunter. Okay, so this the idea is you play a lot of cheap cards, and Voracious Reader saves you by drawing you three cards. So... Hunter does have quite a few strong one drops now. Adorable Infestation, give a minion plus one plus one, summon a one one cub, and add a one one cub to your hand. That's a really strong card, actually. Carry in studies, discover a death battle minion, your next one costs one less. So basically, you discover a minion that's one less expensive. The studies cards are really strong in general. Intrepid Initiate, it's a cheap card to put on the board. If your opponent doesn't kill it, it's basically going to be a one mana three two, especially with cheap spells. Overwhelm. Deal 2 damage to a minion. 
uh, Pin Flinger. Oh, and it deals one more for any extra beasts you control. So it's a really solid removal card for the mana cost. Pin Flinger, deal one damage, return this to your hand. If you're playing a lot of cheap spells, it kind of makes sense. So that combos nicely with Rapid Fire. Deal one damage and then add a deal one damage to your hand. Tracking, uh, you get exactly the, the card that you're going to want. So I think the card you're generally going to look for here is going to be Voracious Reader. So tracking into Voracious Reader sounds insane to me. I would definitely include tracking so you can get through your deck list to the cards you actually need to keep going. Uh, Wolpertinger, um, it's a 1 mana 1-1 one, one that copies itself. If you have it in your hand and it has additional stats, then the copy gains all of the stats of this one. So if you have cards like Scavenger's Ingenuity, you draw it, it becomes a 3-3 three, three that uh, duplicates into a 3-3. Three, three. Pretty solid there. Uh, Imprisoned Felma is a very, very strong hunter card, so I would throw that in there for 2 mana. It's going to deal 5 damage to something when it awakens. Uh, Rust Sworn Initiate. Um, it has plus one spell damage on the death rattle, so that does make rapid fire a bit better. It is 3-3 three, three of stats for two mana, so I don't think this is actually too bad of a common. I have played around with it a little bit to some degree in the past. Um, kind of one of those forgotten ones, but I think when you have spell damage cards, or cards that can benefit with spell damage like rapid fire, overwhelm, or kill command, it's, it's not bad. And uh, let's see, Animal Companion, just really strong beast card, kill command, finisher, and then Wretched Tutor, kind of in there for fun, but if you are running into trouble, then you can spell burst deal two damage to your opponent's minions. So if you need to come back on the board, that would be how you can do it. If you don't want to come back on the board and you are just winning, then just play your spells first and then play the Wretched Tutor as a two five. You don't have to spell burst into deal two to your entire board. Alternatively, you can play it on the board, spell burst it just to waste the effect, and then throw your one cost minions on the back of it. So as long as you play around your own spell burst, I think it's okay. Um, there might be a better card. Needs some experimentation. Overall, this list uh, might be decent, so uh, give it a shot. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so the Druid Swarm deck list. Uh, I think this one's going to be better. I think it was Kibler who was playing with this deck at the pre-release event where they had all of the streamers um, uh, basically experimenting with decks. And this is pretty much the deck list he came up with. So it's basically throw all your stuff on the board, make a huge uh, board of a lot of guys, buff them all up, and then Savage Roar to win. Uh, very aggressive deck. And of course, naturally, that makes it a voracious reader deck. This card is really, really good in this kind of list. So Acorn Bearer, you get extra 1-1s, one makes sense in a token deck. Uh, Adorable Infestation, as I mentioned, really strong. And that combos nicely with uh, Gibbling. So Gibbling, Spellburst, you summon another Gibbling. And the Gibbling you summon has Spellburst as well. So as long as you keep playing one-cost spells, you can keep summoning a bunch of these guys. Um, as long as it's still your turn, your opponent can... Then, of course, remove the spell burst gibbling that is still remaining, but um, it's actually pretty easy to get a few guys off of this. And they're all tokens that you can buff up with cards like Power of the Wild, Savage Roar, or Blessing of the Ancients. And because it has that spell burst effect, if it is on the board with spell burst and you play these cards, then you're going to be buffing up not only this guy, but also the one it summons. Or actually, the order might be reversed there for the spell burst. I think it is reversed for the spell burst. Um, but at the bare minimum, these cards will be summoning more Gibblings, so it just makes your spells better. Nature Study is a great card. Discover spell, your next card, your next spell costs one less. Perfect with Gibbling. Partner Assignment, um, you could try it with two of these in the deck, add a random two cost and three cost beast to your hand. Maybe you want two copies of that instead of something like Tree Enforcements. So this is basically to summon a 2 2 tree, and I think a one mana 2 2 that's a spell that benefits your spell burst. It makes sense good enough, probably. Um, Dreamway Guardians, two, one, two, uh, lifesteal tokens for two mana, pretty solid. Rising Winds, you either summon eagles and then get another eagle to summon, or you use it for card draw. But generally, I think you would go full aggressive and use it for the eagles. Uh, Shrubbed Deer, um, summon a two, two treant. It, so that's three, three stats, basically, on the board at once, which you can buff up both bodies, doubling your buff effects. Uh, bees, deal four damage to a minion, or if well, okay. More specifically, summon four bees that deal one damage each to a minion, and if any of the bees are surviving, then they remain as tokens on your board. So, pretty strong token card. And Archmage Vargoth, um, 
I think I'd throw this in here mostly for fun. What would you double it with? I guess Blaze, Blessing of the Ancients or Power of the Wild. If you were on turn 7, Vargoth, Blessing of the Ancients, Blessing of the Ancients might be good. Vargoth might be just way too slow here. And then, because I like this card and I just want to use it, I did throw in two Ogre Mancers. So this is a token deck, so summoning tokens for yourself is going to be good. The opponent's probably going to have to use spells to remove you guys. And that Ogre Mancer is just going to be a really big problem for them because they might kill all your stuff but then you just summon a bunch more skeletons and you savage roar and win anyway so i think i think ogre mancer might actually fit there uh if you do have uh some of the legendaries i think there's enough choose one cards in this deck for a keeper Stiladris to be good so if you happen to have that legendary i'd probably include it uh otherwise pretty solid list as it is just very aggressive beat your opponent down um okay let's move on okay skull Mance. Galactrond. Okay, so this is a very budget deck, but basically the idea is you draw through all of your cards uh, by using Hand of Gold and in order to do that, and then eventually you play Galactrond the Wretched. You have all of the Invoke Galactrond cards, so whenever you invoke as Warlock, you get two one-one tokens, uh, which makes cards like Plague of Flames really good. And uh, the idea is that you just try to summon so much stuff throughout the game that uh, you overwhelm your opponent. Uh, let's see, we have some cards like Soul Shear in here, which add Soul Fragments to your deck. Um, mostly it's just kind of there as cheap removal. Because those two Soul Fragments uh, heal two health each, it's actually like a slightly better delayed Penance. Um, obviously, self-heal is better in Warlock than it is in Priest, so eventually you're going to heal four with this. So I think that's pretty good, even if you're not playing the other Soul Fragment cards. Uh, they do have Spirit Jail here to survive a little bit. Tour Guide allows you to hero power and then to uh, take two damage, draw a card. So pretty strong, uh, like one mana, draw a card for two damage. And you have cards like Brittle Bone Destroyer here. If your health changed this turn, your hero's health, then you get to destroy a minion. That is a really strong card. Um, makes cards like Soul Shear and Tour Guide better. So yeah, just kind of cycling through your deck. Um, and, and the way you use Hand of Gold and by the way, if you don't know, is you discard it. So you use Nightshade Matron to discard your highest cost card, theoretically Hand of Gold and or you use um, Expired Merchant to do the same thing. So those are your four discards. You always try to target Hand of Gold and if you can. You get a bunch of free draws, and eventually you draw Galakron the Wretched. If you have Galakron the Wretched in your hand, you probably do not want to discard it, so just play your Galakron before you play more card draw. Um, I don't think that should be a problem. Um, like, if you have Galakron the Wretched and you are running out on cards, it's probably after or around turn 7 anyway, so just play your Galakron, and then you can continue Hand of Gold Anning for more card draw. Um, so if you have the other Galakron epic, Veiled Worshipper, I think it would probably fit in this deck pretty nicely. You know, 4 mana, 5, 4, draw 3 cards if you've invoked twice. I think that's definitely worth other cards in the deck, uh, Demonic Studies. I just think all of these Studies cards are pretty strong, flexible, and the one mana cost is not an issue because the demon you're going to be summoning or another demon that turn is going to be one less. Uh, you could do something like Demonic Studies, discover a demon, and then coin Imprisoned Scrap, scrap, eh, <laughs> imprisoned scrap Imp on turn one. Uh, that might be pretty good. Um, yeah. I threw in an animated broomstick in here as well. So if you have guys that you want to summon and you want to make some trades immediately, then that is going to be handy. You can also use it as sacrificial fodder for Plague of Flames. It might even justify having two of these broomsticks somewhere in the deck. Not exactly sure what you would cut for that. Um, maybe... Maybe something like a tour guide or a demonic studies. I'm not sure. Anyway, I think this list is pretty decent. It, it kind of has the same game plan as like a more high costing Galakrond Warlock. It probably isn't as good, but um, it should be solid. I think you could win some games with that. Okay, so let's uh, close that and go to Budget Tempo Mage. Okay, so this is also a spell damage-ish deck. Though the spell damage is mostly for Sorcerer's Substitute. If you have a spell damage, then you get another 6-6. Six, six. So 6 mana, 12-12, 12, 12, basically. Split across two bodies, insanely good. Um, definitely makes it worth probably including cards like Lab Partner into the deck. So uh, you'll notice I didn't bother to craft Cram Session for this. Draw a card improved by spell damage. Um, 
because there are going to be circumstances where you don't have spell damage and then it's just two mana draw one card i don't even know that you care so much about drawing too much because you really are playing for tempo with a deck like this and you can just play Voracious Reader instead. So if you just lower your mana curve, Voracious Reader compared to uh, Cram Studies, I think Voracious Reader is the better card here. So you have uh, quite a few minions. Um, Lab Partner, solid 1 mana, 1-3, one plus 1 spell damage. Kind of threatening. Uh, spell damage is probably going to be pretty good in uh, Mage. I threw in a Trick Totem here. Um, trick Totem Shaman has been a real problem for me playing as Priest. So... I might actually consider playing two Trick Totems. It actually tends to be pretty good. I thought it would just Frostbolt itself, but in practice, I've seen it being pretty good. But it obviously would be much better in Shaman because you're going to clone it, you're going to buff it up, it's a Totem, and Totem Shaman has synergy, whereas Mage just is going to have random spells. So it might not be that good. Maybe you can swap it out for a transfer student. And you'll notice this is an Epic, but they gave it to everyone for free for Skullamance, so it's decent. I don't know. Just kind of picking random uh, cheap cards to throw in. Aside from that, Pinflinger. So if you play a spell, you deal one damage. Oh, you deal one damage, you play a spell, you get it back to your hand, you can deal another damage. So you can either use that for removing your opponent's guys or for dealing extra damage. You could almost think of it as like um, having spell damage on your cards because every time you play a spell, it's going to deal one extra damage with your Pinflinger. So decent card, I think. And then Violet Spellwing, one mana, one, one that adds arcane missiles. You'll notice I also put Arcane Missiles in the deck too, so if you get a clear board, you can deal a lot of damage to the opponent's face with that, and that's going to make your spell damage a little better. Um, also serves as a cheap spell. So combo with Wand Thief, getting another mage spell. Uh, you can kind of see where it's going, just playing a lot of cheap spells and trying to use the, the mana efficiency to kind of clear your opponent's board and eventually finish your opponent off. Star Scryer, drawing a spell through your deck, um, gets you closer to cards like Sorcerer's Substitute. So, decent there. Uh, let's see, Firebrand. Uh, this is definitely going to be a really key card. So, Spell Burst, which requires you to just play any spell after you summon it. Deal 4 damage, randomly split among all enemy minions. Uh, really great tempo tool. So, on, play f on turn 4, you could just play this with a 1-cost spell, like Arcane Missiles or something. And you're probably going to finish off most of your opponent's minions. But as an alternative, you also have Imprisoned Observer. 3 mana, 4, 5, dormant for 2 turns. When this awakens, deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. Your opponent isn't going to want to play minions into this because they're just going to get annihilated by that. Deal 2 damage to all enemy minions. It's also mana efficient. 5 health, 4 mana, for 3... Uh, sorry. 4 attack, 5 health for 3 mana. Basically making it a 4 drop that you play on turn 3. Yes, you don't get it till turn 5, but with the 2 damage AoE... It makes it pretty solid. I think I think it's worth an include in a deck like this. And then Fireball, uh, good for finishing damage. Worm Weaver. Um, there might be better 5-cost cards if you have Legendaries. So, let's see. Um, there's a lot of Mage Legendaries that are 5-cost. So, Jandis Barov, if you have that, I'd probably play that instead of the Mana Worm Summoning Guy. Mizaki Master Duelist, if you cast a spell, gain plus one spell damage, would fit into this deck. And then Raz Frost Whisper, at the end of your turn, deal one damage to all enemies improved by spell damage. I think all of those three are better than Worm Reaver. But uh, if you're playing the budget version, if those Mana Worms survive a turn, and you just play a bunch of spells on the back of it, it's going to be dealing a lot of damage to your opponent's face. So I don't think that's too bad. It's a decent five cost spell. A five cost minion and it's a spell burst so the fact you're playing cheap spells works with that it's decent and then if you can draw the sorcerer substitute that's a really good finishing finisher in terms of just having a lot of stats on the board hard to deal with if you can actually get that out okay a uh, couple more decks left uh so budget buffs uh let's see so the idea here is you just have a bunch of cheap cards you try to buff them up and become really annoying for your opponents i would say Super notable cards in the deck, Dragon Maw Overseer. If you can copy that with something like Gift of Luminance or a Psych Split, it is so annoying to deal with. If your opponent can't answer your Dragon Maw Overseer in one or two turns, you're probably going to win. Um, aside from that, Raise Dead. It's basically a zero cost. Get two minions back to your hand. Uh, because it deals damage to yourself, it's going to work with Brittle, Br Brittle, Bro eh. Brittle Bone Destroyer. If your he hero's health changed this turn, destroy a minion. Though, I might consider cutting this because you're playing the Temple deck. I don't know if your opponent is actually going to go after your own face. Um, if there was some other ways you can like deal some damage to yourself, then that might be a bit better. It is a really strong card, but it might not fit this deck. 
So, in addition, Draconic Studies, Discover Dragon, your next one costs one less. I don't think there's any dragons in the deck, but getting another dragon for one less later on is going to be pretty good. There's a lot of strong dragons, so I think it's fine. A uh, Frazzled Freshman, one mana, one four. Don't underestimate it. That is a lot of health. It's really hard to remove. If you buff it up with Power Ward Feast, it's going to basically crush your opponent's early game. And uh, if you can hold the board as Buff Priest, Temple Buff Priest, um, you're going to be in a good position. So you definitely want that guy in your deck. Imprisoned Homunculus, one mana, two five. Doesn't come out till turn three, but does come with Taunt, has a lot of stats. It's pretty solid. And uh, once that appears, you can throw Dragon Mar Overseer on turn three and buff it up to a 4-7. That is a good play. Evo Constrictor, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, Death Rattle, add a Lackey to your hand. Lackeys are really good. I would say a Lackey in a tempo-based deck is probably better than drawing a card. So a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two that like draws a better card, I'd say that's really good. I, debatable whether it's better or not than drawing a card, but a 2 mana, 2-2 two, two that drew a card would be really good too. Um, Colturon Chaplain. Give a friendly minion plus two health. So if you have a bunch of minions on the board, which you're trying to do with this deck, you buff them up even more. Um, if you have that one cost minion on turn one, this is a good follow up. So a solid card. Power Word Feast, give a minion plus two plus two, restore it to full health at the end of this turn. So if you play one cost, you Power Word Feast it, you trade into a minion. Not only does it get plus two plus two, but it gets all its health back too. So pretty good. Um, Thought Steal. Uh, this is probably one of the more iffy cards in the deck. I don't know that you actually want Thought Steal now that I really think about it, because your opponent's random cards might be control tools. I'm actually going to remove that. A Voracious Reader is really what you want to be using to get cards. So we'll swap that for something else. Apothesis, uh, 3 mana, plus 2, plus 3, and Life Steal. Um, if you get out on a minion, it's going to be hard for your opponent to go face and rush you down. It's also a good buff. That's decent stats. So it's a good option. Uh, Dragon Mar Overseer. Pretty self-explanatory. 3 mana, 2-2 two, two, that keeps giving plus 2 plus 2 buffs. Really essential in this deck. Gift of Luminance. Give a minion Divine Shield, then copy it as a 1-1. One, one. If you play that on something that has an effect like Dragon Mar Overseer, that's really nice. So that's kind of your target there. I don't think it's like the best buff in this deck, but it's an option. Shadow Mod Madness. If your opponent has any death rattle minions, stealing them is really great. I think Shadow Madness is very, very good um, with the cards that are currently available. So I would definitely include that as kind of a control tool, but also kind of a tempo-y tool. Uh, Ogre Mancer. Um, as I keep mentioning, when you're playing those tempo decks and you throw out an Ogre Mancer, your opponent needs to cast a spell to remove your guys, and that's going to give you free 2-2s. Two it's also a 3-7, so I think it is pretty decent. Uh, Psych Split. Give a minion plus one plus two, so I'm going to copy of it. Really fits this kind of deck theme. So, uh, which cards would I throw in as alternatives for Thought Steel? Uh, if you do have uh, Reliquary of Souls, I would probably include that as a one mana, one three, life steal. The death battle is not that relevant, but a one mana, one three is a decent early body. Um, let's see, what else can we grab here? Grand Mummy might not be bad. Uh, Death Rattle, give a random friendly minion, plus one, plus one. Uh, if I, if you have a Sethic Feel Weaver, I would include that in the deck list, but that is an epic. Um, so obviously there's a bunch of buffs, so you can get extra buff value, casting spells on your own minions. This would be the card I would definitely include if you have it. Let's take a look at the mana curve. Madame Lazul is an okay option if you have it. Legendary, though. So let's see here. Um, I might include Cabal Acolyte as well in this list. It does have a lot of uh, cheap spells, but once again, it's an epic. Psychopomp, epic as well, but another decent option. So if you have any of those, you could you could consider them. I think we're going to go actually with the uh, Grand Mummy. It kind of fits the deck list. As long as you have a guy on board, that's going to be pretty good stat value. In practice, I haven't seen it being super great, but... All of those other options you can consider in epics. So if you want the cheap version, I'd probably go with Grand Mummy. So just playing your cheap spells and then Voracious Reader rather than relying on the Thought Steal to get good cards, which often it won't because they're random from your opponent's deck. Okay, so there's the list. Uh, might also drop one Grand Mummy for a second Ogre Mancer. That's another option to go with. 
So let's see, is there anything else here? Have we done all 10 decks? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, yep, so that's all of the 10 decks I came up with the other day for Skullamance. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely can confirm the Weenie Souls deck is pretty decent because I've been basically playing that list with one or two cards de different. Um, if you want to see what I'm currently playing, well, uh, here's the deck list as well, but that isn't exactly a budget list because it's got a bunch of epics in there like Cabal Shadow Priest or Cabal Acolyte. This is what I hit Diamond with earlier. Um, but I guess the vest isn't too expensive, so... Yeah, you could give it a shot. It would be about 1,600 death dust to craft. And then a bunch of commons, which you probably have anyway. So that's going to be it for this video. Um, thanks for watching. I'm going to include all of the deck lists in the description so that you can copy them in and use them. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my future video content.